So today we are going to talk about building drawers. Now building drawers can be a little bit intimidating, especially if you are a beginner woodworker. And I am guessing that you're here because you want to build a drawer and you are just a little bit overwhelmed and intimidated by it. So today I am going to break it all down for you. I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can build a drawer. Two of them are super beginner friendly and the third one is sort of an intermediate version just because you need a table saw or a router to do that. But I promise you it is super straightforward to build and I will show you exactly how you can get reproducible, wonderfully, beautifully working drawers in no time. Now before we start building drawers, there are a few design decisions that you want to make. First thing is what kind of material do you want to build your drawer with? You could use dimensional boards, which are your 1x3s, 1x4s, 1x6s, or you can use plywood, which kind of makes it a little bit flexible for you to get the exact dimensions you want. You can use 3 quarter inch plywood or you can use half inch plywood. A lot of drawers in uh, manufactured furniture is usually built using half inch plywood and that is totally fine half inch plywood works beautifully i like to just use three quarter inch plywood because usually i buy this sheet of plywood for my project and i have enough left over so i can also use it up to build my drawers now for the base of the plywood it's built using quarter inch plywood or I have used this in the past. You could use what is called backer board, which is smooth on one side and it's rough on the other side. You always obviously want the smooth side to be on the inside of your drawer. It is a little bit thinner than quarter inch plywood, but it's a lot cheaper. And this works just as well. I have used it in many, many projects. Next step is the type of drawer slides you want. And there are many different types of drawer slides and I'm not going to go into details, but I love, love, love using these ball bearing full extension drawer slides. These help you pull the drawer out all the way out of the frame when you're using it. And I really love that feature. They are super durable and so smooth to use. So I love using these ball bearing drawer slides, but you could also have bottom mount drawer slides and other cheaper versions as well. Now let's talk about calculating the size of your drawer. So let's assume that this is a cabinet that we are building a drawer for. The opening of this cabinet is 14 inches. At this point, you want to double check the thickness of your drawer slides. Most manufacturers will have this available. One of the most common thicknesses is half inch. That's what we are going to use going forward. So we've got two drawer slides, which makes it a total of one inch. This means that our drawer is going to be one inch smaller than the opening of the cabinet, which is 13 inches. So that is the total width of our drawer. Now you always want to inset the front and the back within the sides, and I will explain the exact reason why we do this in just a little bit when we start building the drawers. But because they are inset, that means that the actual width of the front is going to be an inch and a half less than the total width because each of these are three quarter inches thick. Now for the depth of the drawer itself, it can be anything that will fit inside your cabinet. And you wanna make sure that you have drawer slides that come for that size. Typical drawer slide sizes are 14 inch, 16 inch, 18 inch. So you can use those as a guide. Now before we cut down some boards and I show you exactly how to assemble the drawers, I wanna tell you that building drawers, perfect drawers, smooth operating drawers, starts from the very beginning of your project. And that means that it starts when you actually are assembling the frame or the cabinet that is going to house your drawer. You want that to be perfectly square because that is going to help make sure that your drawer operates smoothly. Okay, so we're gonna start putting the drawer together. Now this is a pretty narrow wide drawer. So we have the two sides and we have the front and the back. Now remember when we talked about the design of the drawer, I told you that you always want to have the front 
inset within the two sides. And now let's talk about exactly why that is. Now the main thing that first comes to mind is that if we had the side on the inset like this, you would see the raw edge on the sides every time you would open the drawer. Also, if you used pocket holes, you would have pocket holes right here and they would be visible every time you open the drawer. But that isn't the main reason why we do this. The main reason is that if we had it this way and we had a drawer front, every time you pull, you would be exerting a force to pull it apart. Instead, when you have the front and the back inset, now when you're applying the force, you aren't exactly pulling it away. So that creates a much stronger drawer. So the first step now in making the drawer is to attach these joints and build the box. And the first beginner friendly way to do that is to simply use wood glue and finish nails. Or you could use countersunk screws or my new favorite trim head screws. So they are screws but they have really tiny heads which almost disappear under the surface. And that is the box. And before we go to the next step, I am going to quickly double check to make sure that we are square, which we are. So we are going to go ahead and get ready to attach the base. For the base, I have a sheet of quarter inch thick plywood that I have cut to a about the same size as the box. When I say about, that is because I leave about an eighth of an inch all around. So when the drawer is installed, you don't exactly see the edge of the base. Now, once again, to attach the bottom on this, we're just gonna use wood glue and finish nails. And that is the drawer. So technique number two to make drawers is to use pocket holes instead of the nails or the screws. We attach the front or the back to the sides using pocket hole screws and wood glue. You want to make sure that all of these joints are perfectly square or that means that they are perfectly at a right angle. So you want to make sure you use a clamp if you need to. Now there may be situations like you see here where the boards aren't perfectly aligned. Well, that's okay. We just pull it all together, align it, clamp it, and attach it with pocket hole screws. So this is the drawer box. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and check for square. Something you should always, always do. And we're good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the bottom. And we are attaching it exactly the same way we attached it the first time around using wood glue and finished nails. And that is the second drawer. The third way of making a drawer is to make the joints using pocket holes. But instead of using the nailed on base from the bottom, we are going to create a groove or a recess to slide the base into place. This gives us a more finished professional look to the drawers. This one needs a table saw. We set the table saw blade height to about half the thickness of the material, which in our case is 5 8 inches. And I set my table saw fence at 3 quarter inches, which is going to be the distance of the top of the groove from the bottom of the drawer. I always like to run a scrap board through to make sure I get all the settings dialed in before running the actual drawer pieces. After the first pass, I moved the fence closer to the blade by about a sixteenth of an inch and made another pass. Now let's try to see if the quarter inch plywood fits in there, which it doesn't, so I adjusted it by another sixteenth of an inch and passed that through. And this time, it works beautifully. This is going to be the starting point for the first pass of all of our drawer faces. It is important to send all the boards through at the same setting so you get an aligned groove on all sides of the drawer. And the second pass is going to be at the 3 quarter inch mark. Now when we make pocket holes, they are going to be on the face that does not have the groove. So when you clamp it into the pocket hole jig, you want to make sure that the groove is facing away from the drill guide. If you want to learn more about making pocket holes, I have a cheat sheet that will help you, which I will add a link to in the description below. Now for the assembly, the assembly is exactly how we assemble drawer number two, but we want to make sure that the grooves are all facing inside and aligned with each other.
Once you have three sides attached, you can simply slide the base into place and then you can attach the fourth side using wood glue and pocket holes. And that, my friends, is the drawer. Now, the next step is to install it in the frame. You can squeeze the black tab to separate out the two parts of the drawer slide. It is very important to keep the drawer slide level as you attach it. Here I'm using a scrap piece of 2x4 to hold the slide up as I attach it. Now we have to remember that this is going to be an inset drawer front. So we have to leave space for that drawer front before we attach the drawer slide. So since my drawer front is 3 quarter inches thick, I'm simply going to mark a 3 quarter inch line and use that to align the front of this drawer slide and then attach. Now if you were not using an inset drawer front and it was an overlay drawer front, you could simply go all the way to the edge of the cabinet frame. And once you have everything aligned, you can just go ahead and attach it with screws. And I repeated the entire process on the other side as well. Now we're going to go ahead and add back the drawer slides. And you want to make sure that they are open so they are coming out. And then we go ahead and place the drawer in its spot. Now we do need the drawer to be raised up so it can move freely. So we are going to use this piece of quarter inch plywood on both ends so it is equally raised. And now we're going to pull the drawer out. Now you want to make sure that this is completely aligned with the front of the drawer. And now you can just go ahead and add some screws. And then you can simply take the drawer off and add the remaining screw onto the drawer. And then put it back in. Now for the next drawer. Or in the case where you do not have a base to help you support things, this is how you do it. So this is where the drawer front for this drawer reaches. Now remember we need an eighth of an inch above that drawer front. And then we need a little bit more space before we can attach the base of the drawer. And then the drawer slides need to be a little bit higher on the drawer as well. So about an inch and a half from this line would probably be the perfect place to attach the next drawer slide. Now we need to support the drawer slide in place while we attach it. And to do that, we could use a piece of scrap plywood, clamp it in place. Now you wanna make sure that this is completely level before you attach the drawer slide. This works well and I've used it in the past, but here is another more efficient way of doing this. I like using the Craig drawer slide jig. This clamps right into place. It has a lip here that aligns to the edge of the frame and makes sure that this is completely level right here. And now I can clamp it in place and support my drawer slide on it while I attach it. And the best part, you can also use it to support your drawer as you attach the drawer slide to the sides of the drawer. Now for the drawer front. If you are going to be using hardware, I like to make the hardware holes to get started first. You can measure and mark and make the holes or you can use a hardware jig like this. The black knob set the fence to half the width of the board and the gray knobs are the spacing between the holes for the hardware. Once you have it adjusted, you align it to the center point of the board and clamp and make the holes. To attach the drawer front onto the drawer, you want to apply lots of wood glue to the drawer itself, place the drawer front, and make sure that there is an eighth of an inch spacing on all sides of the drawer front. Once it's aligned, you can use long screws through those hardware holes into the drawer. And this holds the drawer front in place while you can open up the drawer and add some countersunk screws from the inside. Once the countersunk screws are in, you can take out the temporary screws, finish your drawer the way you want, and add your hardware. Most hardware comes with small screws, so you want to buy longer hardware screws, which makes it super easy to attach the hardware onto the drawers.
Now, in the case where you are not planning to use hardware, you can use a combination of hot glue and wood glue to hold the drawer in place. The wood glue does most of the job in the long run, but the hot glue is flexible enough for the first few seconds where you can adjust the drawer front and then it cools down and holds the drawer front in place while you can add your countersunk screws. And then you just put your drawers back in place and enjoy. So that is everything you need to know about building drawers. It might seem like a lot of things to pay attention to and remember, but trust me, as you keep building more and more drawers, it gets easier and easier. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below, and I will see you next time.